Well, hello everyone, I'm Brandon Bonifer, creator and founder of the Key to Success Planning System. And guys, today I'm gonna to show you how you can maximize your digital planning experience using OneNote. Now, OneNote is an application that is universal, meaning you can use it on Windows, Apple, Android, and even some e-paper devices. Today, guys, I'm gonna show you how you can use our planning system, why you would digital plan, and what are some of the benefits of using OneNote and I'm gonna take you through our complete lineup of planners that are gonna help improve your productivity and help you reach those goals that you are wanting to achieve in the coming year. So stay with me. So first and foremost, I'm Brandon Bonifer and thank you for tuning in guys. Throughout this video, if you learned just one thing, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button and tell your friends. If you have a question, please hit the comments. Myself or someone in our organization, I'm sure will reach out to you. Guys, today we're gonna to talk about digital planning using OneNote. Now OneNote is an application, like I said, that is universal, meaning you can use it across platforms such as Windows, Android, Apple, and even some e-paper devices. What makes OneNote so unique is from your tablet to your mobile phone to your desktop computer, you can synchronize your notes. I've been using OneNote for a number of years and have really learned to love it. It is a system that allows me to use my Android Fold to my iPhone uh, tablet to even my desktop computer and be able to synchronize my digital plans, get my thoughts and ideas out of my head down on paper or digital paper in this sense. Today, guys, I'm gonna be showing you the planner on different devices at some point or another. You might see an iPad, you might see an Android, you might even see a Windows Surface. The point of that is for you to know that you can use this planner across platforms. The templates, the design, the layout works seamlessly throughout each one of those platforms and looks the same and identical. So before I show you the different planner editions that we have available, I wanna answer some commonly asked questions by first time users, as well as those that have been using OneNote for a period of time. The first question is, why choose OneNote for digital planning in the first place? Well, I answered that question a little bit already, and the biggest reason is because it's universal. The planner and the application are available across several different platforms so you can easily synchronize your notes. The other thing is OneNote is a free application to install across your mobile and tablet devices. Even on your desktop, you can get a free version of OneNote. If you are a business user and have the desktop suite, it comes with it as well. What devices work with OneNote? Well, OneNote works with a lot of different devices. If it be Samsung tablets, phones, Android devices, Apple products, such as the iPhone, the iPad, even Windows computers, Microsoft Surface, and the list goes on and on. You could even use it on an e-paper device like the Onyx Books, which we have a video in the description if you wanna check out. The devices that use OneNote are endless. It allows you to have confidence that you'll be able to use and view your planner for years to come. One question that I get all the time is what integrations come in our planning system that come in OneNote. Well, I did a video that goes through some of the best hidden productivity tips, 12 tips that are gonna change the way you look at digital planning. And I could really dive into some of those now, but you're gonna to wanna to check out that video before, now, or after you make your planner purchase or choose to do digital planning on OneNote, regardless what planner you use, because the tips are consistent across any OneNote planner. And even those that don't use OneNote for planning yet, check them out because there's a lot of good things in there, including how to create your own hyperlinks, which is one of the big reasons I enjoy using OneNote. OneNote allows me to go ahead and hyperlink a particular page. So maybe I have a meeting page and I wanna copy that meeting page and put that meeting page right into my daily planning. It allows me then to save that meeting under a customer folder, other client, other project that I'm working on, but yet have it available in my daily planning so that I can easily access it by a click of a button. That makes my digital planner more or less an index to what's taking place in my life. Another thing that really comes out a lot of times is synchronizing tasks. In OneNote, you are able to use the desktop version to create synchronized tasks. It allows you to help you systematically understand the tasks that are in front of you. But 
for those that love traditional planning, OneNote allows you to go ahead and copy your notes by simply using a lasso tool, copying those tasks that you didn't finish yet today, and pasting those on the next day. This allows you to have carry forward note taking experience between your task and your key three that you weren't able to finish, especially for those rolling projects that are ahead of you. So we're talking a lot about OneNote and all the benefits. What's some of the disadvantages? Why would I choose a PDF planner over a OneNote planner? And there's tons of different PDF planners that work with applications like GoodNotes, NoteShelf, Nobility, Samsung Notes, and all those cases that work on some of the same devices. Well, the one thing that makes OneNote unique over PDF planners is I often think of OneNote as a binder and I think of PDF planners as a notebook. Notebooks are bound, they have limited space, they're indexed forward, and everything is positioned in a place that they're originally designed. With binders, I can open those binders up, I can insert pages, I can move pages, I can create tabs and sections. If you think of the days of using a Franklin Covey binder, you had that. You had your daily planning, and then you had tabs and sections for the things that you were working on. If it be meetings, projects, calendar, updates, notations of your journals and thoughts, that you can do with OneNote and create a binder-like system. Plus, each individual page has an infinity space, which allows you to get pretty creative on adding additional components to your planner which guys is something that we're bringing to you called tiles. In 2023, we are introducing tiles and it allows you to add components to the planning system, use some of the pre-designed components that we already have called tiles and expand your note-taking experience. Throughout the coming year, we're gonna be showcasing additional tiles, ones that help you with invoicing, estimating, taking better notes, tracking your projects, and the list goes on. And if you have some ideas, share them in the comments below and we'll look at how we can improve the tile experience. And I'm sure you guys have a lot more questions and we will definitely do our best to uncover those questions as we move forward. Go ahead, go to our website, search for keywords and find some different topics that we've already covered. If you haven't already subscribed to our newsletter, we're constantly giving you guys feedback and again, check out our YouTube channel. We have a designated playlist on our website designated just for OneNote users. This is a space that allows you to see the latest videos that we have published to help your planning experience using OneNote. So without further ado, let's jump into the Key to Success Planner. There's four additions to our planning system, personal, professional, business, and executive. Each one of those have different tools to help you reach different objectives in your life. Today, we're gonna to show you each one of those additions and what comes in each suite. With each one of these additions, you get a Sunday start and a Monday start, landscape and portrait addition to our planning system. This gives you the flexibility to use the version that best fits your needs on the devices that you choose to use. One of the first pages that everyone always asks me about is what does the daily spread look like? This is the daily page. The daily page consists of the planning board, a focus area where you can determine what your focus, your role, and your energy is for today. What is your daily key three? As you learn more about our system, you're gonna learn about the daily key three. These are the things that matter most in your planning session, and we'll talk about that in tons of training videos as you guys move through the key to success system. We have an area where you have to-dos, where you can not only put the priority, mark the delegation of where they're at as far as status, but also be able to help organize if it's a work, if it's a family, if it's a something you're gonna do when you're traveling or gonna do something during a meeting. Here you have your normal scheduling, which falls just below your morning pre-flight routine and pre-launch activities in the evening. These are the things that are gonna help you organize your routine and processes, which is something you'll learn about as we move forward. To the right of that, you have an area for taking notes. Now you can also type in this planner. So if you're someone that's using a desktop and you wanna be able to type in the planner, you can easily do that. Meal plan. Exercise area, make sure you drink that water throughout the day. And areas for you to indicate your opportunities and what is on your plate for tomorrow. The next thing everybody asks me is what's my monthly view page look like? This is the monthly view. Again, we have Monday start. We also have a Sunday start, which you can see that looks like this. And when you're using the system, you can go ahead and take notations. One thing that some people always ask me is what happens if I have 
a note that I want to be able to copy and paste from one page to the next. Well, if I go into Hero Lasso and I go ahead and copy those pages there, hit copy. Maybe I gotta jump over to the next page because I wasn't able to complete those. And I can just go ahead and paste those and I can put those daily tasks right there. So that's one of the big advantages of digital planning is being able to not only copy and paste your notes, but you can also search for your notes, which is pretty cool. And you will see that in some of our videos as well. The ideal week we introduced in 2022, the ideal week was really developed for those that were facing some type of seasonal change. How often do we look at a seasonal change in our life? Well, that differs for each and every one of us. For me, a lot of times seasonal change is the seasons of the year. It's my kids in school, out of school. Uh, it sometimes happens to do uh, with some of the other priorities in my life, if it be spiritual or housework. But seasonal change takes place. There's seasons in our business. There's just seasons all around us. And by establishing an ideal week, as we embark on those seasons, it helps us gain traction and strength and also helps us have encouragement. Have you ever found yourself just like looking uh, at your week and saying, oh my gosh, I can't find any, any traction for having any stability? Well, a lot of that is, is because we went through a season of change and we didn't take the time to harness it back in. We know when these changes and these seasons take place. And if we get into the idea week, we can look at updating what our focus and where our attention should be in this next season. What is the vision for this season? Where are we gonna put uh, the energy? And then what, how does it affect our morning pre-flight or our routines each and every day? And where is our focus or attention going to be? What is the balance in our time investment? And then ultimately start to write out what the ideal week looks like for you. By using the ideal week, it'll help you give you framework so that you can find more productivity and traction each and every week as you move forward in your daily and weekly planning. The weekly planning page is a review page that I encourage everyone to spend 15 minutes to a half hour on every single week before they start to actually do their planning schedule for the upcoming week. This page here is about reflecting on your accomplishments in the previous week, determining what unfinished business or rolling projects or tasks are gonna roll into the next week. Talk about, be honest with yourself, what took you off focus? What took you away from being able to achieve the things that you wanted to achieve in the previous week? What is your self-improvement? Are you doing things to help grow who you are? And are you making the commitment? And by writing those down each and every week, what your focus and goals are, it helps you establish better routine so that you can help achieve them. Sometimes I write the same thing over and over. Sometimes I find myself skipping it because I found traction on it, only maybe two a few weeks later having to come back to it. But it's healthy for me to recognize what it is that I want to achieve and where I need to put additional energy so that I can focus on the things that matter most in the coming week. Where is our opportunities? What connections lie in front of us? The planning board to me is like that giant whiteboard that you have in front of you. Maybe it's post-it notes for some of us, stacks of paper of different to-dos, but this is the area where you jot it all down. You can do bullet points, you can do wireframing, but write down everything that you have on your mind, get it all out on paper so you can see it in front of you. And then from there, start to structure. What is the things that matter most that you have to do now? What are things that are critical to your success but can be scheduled or prioritized? What is not so critical? Is there anything that you can reduce from your schedule this week or maybe delegate? Is there areas that you have opportunity to schedule some of these things out or, or package things together so they make better use of your time? And ultimately, what is the focus and your goals and your emphasis for what matters most this week? And what are things that you need to think about in the coming week that might take a little bit of energy and motivation for you to process as you move forward? Ultimately speaking, this is the digest of the things that matter most, the things that you need to plan out first, and the big task that you have in front of you that you need to schedule in your week. From here, as you jump into the week, you can start to do that scheduling throughout the week and know where your key three are. And 
all of that is covered in an in-depth training session. So if you want to learn more about the power of using that weekly planning, I encourage you to check out that on our training page. The Coreway pages we've had for a number of years, and these are in all of our planning systems. These are the pages that help you look at each quarter. I'm a big fan of the 12-week year. We know every year when we start January, we're motivated to grow and to achieve. And as the year progresses, sometimes we lose traction on that growth. Well, looking at quarter by quarter planning, it gives us the opportunity to hit the reset button four times a year so that we can refocus, retweak, and reimagine what this year can look like. Start by delegating and designing what that next uh, 13 weeks looks like in the 12-week year. What is the motivation? Where's our focus, our full momentum, and what routines are we going to continue to have focus on? What influencers and connections are important? And what is the timeline for the different projects and things that we're going to take on? And what is the key spaces that we're going to find our annual growth? Where is our reach and personal development activities really taking place? The second page of the Corvi Keys is about progress and reflection. Where was our accomplishment? What areas were we not able to finish? What challenges did we face in this quarter? And what were some of the key results? And what doors are we looking to close? Now we talk about this a lot in the training section of this quarterly planning page, but closed doors is an area where I feel like we put it back on the shelf, allow for the things around us to develop so we can take that idea, that goal, back down, we're ready to embark on it with better things uh, and better technologies and better organization space uh, around us to help us achieve that. The progress report is a quick area where we can basically write out what our reflection is on the challenges and influences and how the quarter went before we start the plan the next quarter. When I look at it each quarter, I look at 12 weeks, 12 weeks for activity, one week for planning. And that brings us to our 13 weeks every single quarter. The vision board is one of the first pages that we developed to help people get an idea for what it is that they wanted to achieve in the coming year. What is your goals? What does your life look like? Where are you to go? What do you have planned for your career, your family, yourself, your education, your growth? What does it look like? And then when you sum all that up, what is your visionary statement for the year? And then as you look at the individual months that play out, when can you implement some action on your vision? And why this is also very important is you look at the vision board, I tell people you want to write down life moments. If you have vacations, milestones that are taking place, you want to be able to plug those in there because as you look at these months, you're going to want to also put in any milestones or any things you already have delegated or planned for the upcoming year. Because when you look at where you already have commitments made, it gives you a better opportunity to understand where you can take action on the visionary plans you have for yourself. The annual keys page was built around four key areas of our life, our self, our career, our community, and our relationship. The brainstorming section helps us to think and digest where we wanna see growth and opportunity in those corners of our life. And then from there, help outline the goals and motivation that we have in those cornerstone areas of our life. The bucket list is a new page in 2023. What we wanna do is make the year exciting. We all have excitement when it comes around to the new year every year. And what this bucket list helps us do is helps us understand, well, where is it? What do we wanna try? Where do we wanna to travel to? Is there books that we want to read? Is there things we want to learn, create, build? What do we want to achieve? How do we want to grow? What is it that we want to listen to? Do we have changes for fitness? What do we wanna find and how do we want to lead in this coming year? And this page, kind of gives us the opportunities to brainstorm those ideas, get creative with it, get fun with it, and then go ahead and start actually planning out what things we want to achieve on, how we might go about them, and what spaces are we gonna find the best results doing them. When we develop the goal pages, each one of the goal pages consists of having a space where you indicate which corner that you're focusing this goal on. What is the summary of that goal? What is your motivation for that goal? A space for you to brainstorm what you need to do to achieve that goal, and then the spot for you to write out an actual action plan for the steps that you need to take to reach your success. And ultimately, what is the reward for you reaching your success with this goal? And that was a look at our personal planner. As you move forward into the professional planner, you gain additional tools that help you organize your professional life. And those tools are going to work on this system, as well as all the templates that you saw from the personal are in the same system as well. The Habit Tracker is one tool that I was really excited to be able to bring to everyone in 2022. The Habit Tracker was a tool that we use to help people gain ownership 
of their habits and help develop not only good habits, but break the habits that are not healthy for our growth. But I didn't want just something where you made a checkbox. I wanted to be something that you could have the opportunity to understand what challenges you face through the process or what opportunities presented themselves. First and foremost, you start with the ability for you to develop your habits. What are the habits you're looking to break? What is your goal with those habits? And what routines are you gonna implement uh, to help you achieve those goals that you have in mind for yourself. And then from here is a space for you to be able to track throughout the entire month each one of the habits where you were able to complete it and the number of times you were able to complete the habit each and every day as you choose to move through the month. But like I said, the challenges and opportunities section was one that gave me a lot of encouragement. One of my goals was to run three miles each and every day and as I moved through the month, sometimes I found myself presented with some challenges, either it be family or friends that were visiting, vacations or trips that we went on. Through using this habit tracker, I've been able to look at my challenges and build better routines to face those head on and be able to encourage myself to take greater ownership of those opportunities. The meeting pages that we introduced into our planning system are really designed not only to help you be able to attend a meeting and take better notes, but for you to be in attendance in the meeting and for you to have the power and will to get the most from it. It starts by writing on your agenda, indicating who the attendees are, and then an area to sketch. This here is so important to meeting planning. When you look at this agenda, what does it mean for you in your role? What are the questions that you have to answer? What are some of the questions that you may be asked that you have to have answers to? Being able to use the sketch board to give you a better sense of how that meeting looks is gonna give you a better framework and make you better prepared to be in attendance. From here, you can write down any additional tasks that came your way, updates on projects, a space for notes. And then an area that I find that is really important is when the meeting is finished, what was accomplished? How could you improve it? What will make the difference? And were you on track? Ultimately, what are your action steps and follow up in the meeting? Now, a lot of people ask me, well, can I add additional pages? And absolutely, you can add additional pages to the meetings um, pages. And we have that in the video linked in the description on how to do so. The project page we redesigned for 2023 after getting a lot of great feedback. Again, we had an area that we kept, which is a sketchboard, a place where you can take notes, wireframe, doodle, make notes, and basically be able to collaborate on what is taking place in the project in the current state. What is the overall theme and planning of the project? What are current notes that you want to discuss? And where are we at with the timeline and objectives? If you have different objectives that are taking place throughout the project, what are they and how do they overlap? And what is the timeline of those projects? From there, we have tasks and assignments. Who are they assigned to? The due dates and objectives and then next steps in the projects. What I find with this project page through the redevelopment of it is we're able to look at it more as an activity board and not just a summary of what's taking place. The budget page was designed for individuals who wanted to have a journal of not only their income, but their expenses and help them keep track of the different obligations and liabilities they had in front of them. It starts out with creating a vision for your budget. What is it that you're looking to achieve in this month when you think about your financial picture. What is your income expense budget? What is your goal for savings? And then a place for you to indicate your actual as you move through the month and a place for you to notate the difference. One thing I think it's important when it comes to planning out your vision for your finances is being able to set realistic goals that you can measure. And we've done that with the planning system using the budget sheet. Here you can see we have places for your checking and cash accounts, your savings and investments accounts, your credit cards and loans, a place for notations of notes. Moving to the right side, you have the income section of the budget planner where you can track wages, interest, dividends, gifts, reimbursements, and even a place where you can set up your own dedicated income sources. Below that is expenses, ranging from home expenses to daily expenses, and again, the same budget actual and different areas for you to track. What I find a lot of people, what they'll do with our budget planner is they'll write out their initial budget, they'll use the last hole tool, they'll copy their entire budget, and then they'll move through each month of the year and they'll paste that budget and even make adjustments to their expenses as they occur throughout the year. This gives you a realistic goal and vision for your finances with the budget planner. The business series introduces the professional builder and the tools there help you build that framework along 
your journey throughout the coming year. Now, all the tools in the professional and personal planner are in this planning system as well. Right here, we're looking at the professional builder. Now, when I built the professional builder, the goal with this was to have a one page business plan that help you not only give you a framework for your goals and activities over the next few years, but be able to have a one page business plan. I had a mentor once tell me that if you can develop a business plan, that will give you some insight on your ability to find career success. I've done many business plans over the years and I've learned that as I go through the process of writing them, I learned something about myself, my business, my role, and the things that I need to do to find success. But they're hard, they're challenging, and sometimes we lose stride before we have an opportunity to complete them. So I want to have a one page plan that would give each and every one of us the opportunity who has never had the opportunity to build a business plan being able to do that with a professional builder. We start by focusing on what is our vision. We indicate what is the challenges that we're currently facing. What are some of the key resources that we have to us? Now, the reason why that is so important, you did not get to where you are today because you didn't have any resources. Everyone has talents and by utilizing those strengths, you will find success. We just need to find out how we take those strengths and plug them in to your daily life so that you can reach the vision you have for yourself. Next, we talk about our key values. These are the fundamental core beliefs that we have for ourselves and our organization. Key vitals are the measurements and the procedures that we have to ensure that there is some type of measurement and accountability in our own goals as well as our organization. And also, what is our 10-year target? If we continue to go down this road, what does it mean for us in the next 10 years? And through it all, what is our absolutes? Absolutes are so important because by having a strong absolute, you know when you need to make right turns and adjustments to your path. Because if you're not hitting the mark, you need to make an adjustment. And this here helps you determine what that mark should be. From here, we talk about what is our accountable actions? What is your role? And what is your accountability in your own success? What patterns and processes can you build into your daily and weekly planning that are going to help you achieve this vision. And from there, what is the most important goals we have in the first three years of our journey? And lastly, and most importantly, is the organizational impact. So many people, as they begin to grow, they start to see success. And what happens, they start to plateau. Well, that plateau occurs because we haven't understand what adaptations we need to make as an organization. If you wanted to grow by 12%, but then think about how that 12% growth impacted your order department, your fulfillment department, the widget processing department, your creative team, it's going to have some type of toll on your continued growth. And by able to indicate what that organizational impact is and determine what reaction and what triggers will be made to make some type of organizational adaption is gonna be so important to you. And it's so fun to talk about, to people about your vision and the goals that you have from it. And by achieving those goals, how you can start to build change in your organization. Nobody likes change, but when they see the success of the organization and the change that surrounds it, everyone is more willing to move together. As we worked on the professional builder this last year, so many people asked us for more process improvement pages that helps us move through that professional builder. And we did that. The yearly progress page is the progress page we added new in 2023. This page is really designed for people that are in the business or executive level. It also, it, what it does, it helps us understand our goals that we have for each quarter, the boulders and where we're at with those activities. What is the progress? What is our accountability and how are we making process improvements in our routine? And where are we at with our vitals, goals versus results, and what is the next step? It's a great dashboard that we've added in those series to help people get a quick look at where the direction of the organization is going from where they started with in the beginning of the year. First one that we built was the Boulder Breakdown. It's an area where you now can help indicate what is the challenge? How is it impacting our organization, ourselves? What previous attempts are made to try to move past that challenge? What is the long-term risk by not addressing that Boulder? Whom does it concern? Who are the parties that it matters to and whom does it affect from there is a note section for discussions to help you understand from the beginning to where you're at now 
so that you move into a planning board, you're better prepared to start to plan out what it looks like and feels like to overcome that boulder. What is your role in that plan? What are the action steps and who's involved in them? And what does it mean for your success? And then from there, where does your organization yourself turn to? What is the next steps in your plan? In addition to the Boulder Breakdown, we wanted to be able to add a page that helped you look at those strengths, determine those talents that you had, and how you enrolled those into accountable actions. Also, we wanted to know was there organizational strengths versus staffing strengths that made your organization unique? And how does these strengths change the expectations and the results? And what strengths can you use to overcome some of the boulders that you're facing? We added in what our focus, forward, and routine planning segments are to this system, as well as an action plan, an area for notes, and what is your role as the organization leader in finding and utilizing your strengths. I talk to so many businesses about their success, and one of the things that really excites me is to talk about what adaptations they're instituting in their organizations. As we grow and start to achieve success, we have to take additional action, and this helps you do that. What is the impact of your success? Let's identify it. How is it impacting your organization? Who does it concern, and who does it affect? Let's talk about the planning and the next steps through it, and then what is the adaptation for our organization and what triggers us to move forward on those adaptation. An area for creating an outline and writing your notes and a place for you to identify your responsibility in summary in the organizational process of improvement. The expense tracker is a tool that we use to help you capture receipts, indicate what those receipts were, if they were tied to a job or an available item, if there was something that you needed to remit, and then being able for you to track if they were approved or reimbursed uh, or whatever notation you want. In here, there's also a master list that allows you to write out uh, each of the expense logs for the entire month, and this gives you a good look or a good re view on where you're at when it comes to your expense tracking. Now that we look at the executive edition, you're gonna see all the tools from the previous editions come to life. When we designed the executive edition, I wanted it to be something that you, as that leader, would not only be able to take the framework of your business and interject those into your daily routines, but I wanted you to be able to pull together a team and help raise the individuals that you work alongside and get them involved. We added a team builder in here that helps you organize your team, be able to sit down with the members of your team, help determine and structure what their goals are and what their role and routines are in your organizational success. This here is designed for the executive that's looking to reach beyond themselves and grow an organization, institution to new levels that you haven't been able to reach before. In the executive planner, we added our organizational chart. This is the first page and template used to help you grow out your team. Starts by organizing what your organization looks like, what staffing boulders you have, what staffing strengths exist in your organization, what are the impacts of your staffing on the organization? Is there any missing seats that you have identified? What areas of your business are growing? Maybe your marketing department is growing and you need to have more staff or more flexibility there. Dividing roles, is there areas of your organization where one employee is taking on two different roles and you need to work to grow that space? And lastly, what is new positions that you want to grow and start to develop and expand on in your organization? and a space for you to write out that plan for how it will be signaled throughout the year in front of you. The individual builder page is one that I'm most excited to show people in this year. It is a page that I feel is gonna be so important for you as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, as a manager, uh, as someone that's not only growing yourself, but needing the growth of the people around you to help find your success for your team and organization. It starts by identifying who that employee, who that individual is. What is their career vision? What is it that they want to see uh, from what that is that they're doing? What is their absolutes? When I have a conversation with someone about what their real absolute goals are or necessities from this job, it gives me the opportunity to help me understand if they're in the right space doing the right things. What boulders do they face? What resources do they have in front of us? What do they value? What is their fundamental beliefs? And how do we measure their 
success and productivity. By identifying this with employees, each employee knows how you measure them, you will find that the things that need to get done are getting done first. From here, we move over to establishing what is the goals for them in their role over the next three years. By having some type of growth plan, you're going to find staff more motivated and they can also start to see how they work into the individual pieces and components of the organization's plan. What is their accountable actions and what routines will they be developing on? And what key objectives will they be taking on? And what is the progress as we move forward? When you look at this individual team builder, you can jump back to the team page and you'll also see under each team member, we added a boulder and a strength page. So you can help identify the boulder that matters most or the current focus that you have for them at this time, as well as you have the ability to help grow and identify a strength that you want to utilize in the organization. All right, guys, you went through this entire video and I appreciate your loyalty to learning about our planning system. And I told you early on that we would talk about tiles, something new that we're introducing. And there's gonna be so much more to come about tiles, but I wanted to show you the tiles that come in the business and executive planners and what this means for you. So what we did with tiles is we looked at some of the most commonly used sections of our planning system and thought, hey, what can we do to allow people to personalize their planning system? I had a gentleman just the other day say, Brandon, I have three different businesses and I have to-do lists in each one of those businesses that I need to look at and review. How can I use your planner and not have all those to-dos together, but still have a space where I can brainstorm the activities that I have in front of me? Well, this is an example of how you would answer that quest. So first off, we're gonna move into tiles and we're gonna have this blank page and you can see this blank page is right here. I'm gonna jump back and I'm gonna go into my backgrounds, I'm gonna use the lasso tool and the first thing I'm gonna do is select a sketchboard because he said he wanted to place the brainstorm. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna select the tile and hit copy. Then I'm gonna move back into my page template and hit paste. From here, I can take the tile and I can reposition it to wherever I want to go. It's really important that you don't scale the tile or change or adjust the size of it because it's been scaled to fit typing in the planning system itself. Now I'm gonna jump back over to the backgrounds and he said he had different tasks and different projects that he wanted to track. Well, in this case, I'm gonna click on task and projects and I'm gonna move in here back to my page template. Go ahead and hit paste and then I can push, I can go ahead and I can place that there. And then I can come up here, paste another tile. And then I can come over here, paste another tile. Now what I did is I created this template here to have a total of one sketchboard in three different spaces where I can go ahead and track projects and tasks. And I can go ahead and I can write on those tiles and make adjustments to them. At any time, I can go ahead and erase those tiles. But what happened if maybe this wasn't the type of layout that I wanted for a tile? I can go ahead and hit delete, come back to my page, go to backgrounds, and maybe I wanna use this tile. And go back to the tile page and hit paste. And then I can go ahead and utilize this tile. This also gives me the ability to change my particular pages that I already have existing. With tiles, we are going to make digital planning a more personalized experience. If you are in business and have tools that you already are using and you wanna be able to use those in the planner, we'll be able to take your individual requests and provide you a customized tile that you'll be able to use in our planning system. Tiles are gonna be a great way to help take people to the next level with digital planning and integrate their planning system into the work that they're already doing. Guys, this is the key to success planning system. And I have faith if you put energy and effort into your plans, you will find results that are gonna impact and change not only tomorrow, but your future. Well guys, that was the key to success planning system for OneNote. I thank you for taking this time going through the system with me. I hope you are as excited as I am as we move into the next journey of our planning system. If you have different ideas that you wanna contribute, by all means, jump on our website, start a chat with us. If you have questions, perfect place to do so. If you haven't already, take a few minutes, subscribe to our channel, and like this video so others can learn about this opportunity. And if you have questions about this particular video, go ahead, hit the comments. 
somebody in the community or ourselves will definitely reach out to you and answer those questions. So if you are someone that's looking to move forward for yourself or even a team, please continue on our website to learn more. The description contains the links to learn about each individual edition that we made available in this video. And if you are someone that's looking to roll this out to a team or to your organization, connect with us via email or on chat as we have special programs available. And also while you're on our site, take a moment, go into our training resource area, learn about how you can use our planning system as we show you training videos on each of the individual pages. We also include in our website walk through video guides on how to install the planning system in OneNote. There's really no excuse on why today shouldn't be the first day that you move yourself forward and get closer to those goals and aspirations that you have for yourself. I'm Brandon Bonifer, founder and creator of the Ketosex Planning System, and Lord willing guys, I look forward to seeing and hearing from each of you as we move forward. God bless.